Hey, what's good up guys? This is the Game Hunter channel with another episode of Class Royale. I just came back from Helsinki, Finland after participating in the first Class Royale tournament. That was such an amazing experience, fellas. I had so much fun. So just stay tuned. I'm going to post the last video blog episode in the next couple of days with more details about the tournament. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned to the channel. Oh my god, that tournament was so much fun. I was doing really, really well in the first stage of the tournament. Um, I think I made a big mistake after like a four of, no, it, it was five or six wins in a row to start the tournament. I decided to change my deck and that was a big mistake. I was kind of afraid that I'm going to come across some spammer decks. So I decided to make some changes. I put the bomber tower and I'm just going to show you probably in another episode the deck that I was using. It was really successful. I got some really epic battles with some big YouTubers like uh, Mold. With the uh, with Ty, he won one battle, I won the other one, and I got a couple of really good ones, really really good battles. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, like I say, it was a big mistake. Changing the deck in the middle of the tournament wasn't a good idea. That completely changed my mojo, and I actually got eliminated for just a few trophies. But you know what? The experience was great. We have a really, really good time, and today we're going to talk about the Champions deck. Jason used this deck during the Championship, and now we're going to analyze every single car, and we're going to go to the battlefield to put it to the test. Before we start, I just want to clarify something, because people get confused. People start talking like crazy. I know, I know, I know, Jason is an amazing kid, okay? He's so smart. He knows how to use this deck like a left and right. And that was the reason that he was so successful. He'd been practicing with this deck for a while. It's not a deck that he just put together like a two minutes before the tournament, which most of us actually did. <laughs> he was actually planning this in advance. And um, I just want to clarify something because like I said, some people get crazy like, okay, wow, we got the unbeatable deck. This is the deck that is going to be all over the place. And actually it's becoming the most popular deck on Clash Royale for obvious reason the champion was using this one but you gotta understand something fellas 40% of the victory is the deck 60% is the player okay so I just want to give a lot of credit to Jason because he was capable to come up with this combination and put it to the test and actually be able to deploy units at the right time during the tournament it was just critical the way that he was placing units on the battlefield so like i mentioned before the deck is amazing but i will give more credit to jason than the deck itself okay what i like about the deck is it's a really well balanced deck what i like about the deck is the rotation okay we have some really good anti-air rotation between the archer and Britney spears three elixir two elixir you cannot go wrong with the rest of the cars the maximum or more expensive car is five which is the minion horde the giant which is the key car of this deck the elixir collector and also barbarian and the idea of this game or the idea of the deck is to be able to control the match with the giant the giant in a defensive the giant in an offensive stand why because well i was present during the semi-finals and during the final two and it was really complicated to face a player who used the mortar for example but using the giant at the right time can actually completely change the face of the game right because the giant is the one that's going to receive the damage and receiving damage from a mortar is really not a big deal for this big dude <laughs> not at all all right so let's analyze this real quick like i say archers Britney spears amazing combination really cheap anti-air unit you cannot go wrong with that and those units behind the giant they can destroy anything Okay, anything. One of the things that I want to clarify because some people are asking me, what happened? Why people during the tournament they weren't using fireballs, for example, to get rid of those units? Well, uh, before starting the second stage of the tournament, the the player had a chance to create three decks and only three decks. Okay, so if you didn't put the fireball at the beginning, you cannot use it at the end of the second stage. So that was one of the reasons. Where we have arrows, arrows are really control a card against uh, spammer decks right a lot of groups uh, against minion hordes is perfect and minion hordes is a card that you're going to see quite a lot in tournament like this one hog rider is the key card also in this deck because in combination with the giant they can do some nasty 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 damage minion horde for obvious reason really powerful really really powerful unit uh, I mean, 
mean, yes, they go down extremely fast with arrows, but if your opponent don't have arrows, minions can take care of everything. They can actually take care of, a, of an arena tower in just a matter of seconds. And in combination with barbarians also works quite okay. Barbarians. This is interesting. This is something that I really enjoy when I was uh, watching Jason use this deck. When he was facing an opponent that was uh, using an Inferno Tower, he was pouring Barbarians in front of the Giants. So the Barbarians were the units receiving the damage from the Inferno Tower, and then the Giant was reaching the enemy tower pretty much with full health. That was one of the keys. That was one of the keys. The, the way that he was deploying the Giant in the middle, in the middle of the Barbarian army, that was one of the keys of the game, which I, I wish I had the replays of the gameplay. I think I can have access to that. Yeah, I can probably get get a copy of the gameplay itself so we can go through some, some of those replays and analyze what's going on. Elixir Collector, because Elixir Collector is going to be one of the key cards in future tournaments, having a... Uh, fast production elixir is just critical. Brainy Spears, as I've already mentioned that, and the giant because the giant can actually hold so many, <laughs> hold the ground big time. All right, so I'm gonna start playing with this deck. Let's go to the Royal Arena. Let's try this deck, Jason deck, in a few battles. Like I mentioned before, it's not all about the deck. The deck is really, really well done. But also, I give all the credit to Jason because he was able to master this deck. He practiced so much with this deck. Okay, that is one of the things that he was mentioning us that he'd been playing with this deck for a while. And that is how you get to know your cards that well. All right, so I'm already start with a really quick rush with goblins, bringing spears in this case. That's something that you're gonna see a lot in tournaments because just sending a little card like the goblins. They can take care of at least 300 hit points in a tower without any problem. That was actually good. Barbarians, so useful to counter everything, right? Right now we were able to counter a group of three musketeers and now we are pushing forward. I know my opponent doesn't have enough elixir, but maybe have enough elixir to <laughs> deploy the arrows. I wasn't expecting that. But anyway, Hog Rider is going to start pushing now because this is the offensive card that I have. Yeah, my opponent is desperate to start using poison. I already know all the cards that my opponent is using. We already know it has the, the Balloon. We already know it has Poison. So I need to be ready for those kind of cards in the future. One more time. Let's send the Britney Spears really quick. Only two Elixirs. Remember, that's why we have this fast rotation of anti-air units. We can send those units all the time as long as we have the Elixir Collector. Now, what do we have? We got Arrows which we're gonna hold. We got Barbarians, Giant, and also the Archer. What are we gonna do? Let's start with the Barbarians in front. As soon as we get close to the bridge, maybe it's a good idea to deploy Mr. Giant, okay? And the Giant is gonna join the party. So this is what's happening. Right now, the Barbarians are becoming the, the mid shield. In the past, the Giant is the one that was receiving all the damage. Right now, he was the Barbarian. Oh, -ho, three Musketeers. This is definitely not good. But like I mentioned before, this combination between uh, Britney Spears and also Archers works quite okay with the Giant. We were able to survive. We only, we only left one Musketeer alive. Uh, using Poison desperately, that's okay. That's okay, I got my Barbarians ready and I'm waiting for that. I was waiting for that uh, Balloon. That's what my minions are in position, okay? My opponent has arrows, but, but unfortunately, he wasn't probably paying attention. <laughs> Barbarians were capable to push forward right now, and we are in good shape. Now the giant is going to distract the rest of the troops, and that's one of the things that Jason was doing so well in the tournament. He was using the giant in such a way that was so annoying for the opponent. I mean, they, they, they keep saying that, they keep looking at the giant as an offensive unit, but also in defense, it's amazing. They can distract so many troops, it's not even funny. The P.E.K.K.A. right now is going to get entertained with a couple of these barbarians. I know the balloon was coming, so I was ready with Britney Spears and also the Minion Horde, Victor Sowers. Not a close, but actually we did pretty well. Pretty, pretty well. This deck is quite simple. Okay, the cards that you're gonna use are simple to get. I mean, there's nothing really fancy here. But again, it's how you deploy the units on the battlefield, how, which card you're gonna hold in your hands before, uh, during the course of the battle. For example, if you know that your opponent has minion horde, it's always gonna be important to keep your arrows handy, right? Because they're gonna save you at the right time. Let's go for another battle. 
Let's go back to the Royal Arena for battle number two. We keep using Jason's deck. I don't know what is the name. I don't know if Jason ever put a name in this deck. I will call it Jason's Giants uh, something. It has to have Giant in the topic because the, the, the key card in, in this deck is the Giant. The way that he was using the Giant, by the way. All right, so we're going to start with the Giant from the back. Let's see. Let's see what my opponent is doing. I have an Elixir Collector right now. Helping me, helping me with the production of Elixir. Valkyrie is coming this way. Uh, that is not good. <laughs> it's definitely not good. But we can put the Hog Rider to start targeting the Elixir Collector. In the meantime, we got the minions to take care of the Valkyrie. Not too bad. We did some decent damage with Elixir Collector down. Now the Giant is pushing all the rest of the troops. Brainy Spears is going to start supporting the Giant, doing some a little bit of damage to the tower. More than 500 hit points. Not bad at all. And now one more time. This is one of the things that I was trying to explain to you fellas. How to use the Giant correctly. Right now we use the Giant on a defensive stand. You see? I was getting attacked by a group of Barbarians and a Valkyrie. Now every single unit is heading back following the Giant. Well played. Yes, Freeze is causing a lot of trouble right now fellas a lot of trouble and this is why the minions are so useful i don't know why my opponent <laughs> didn't pull the trigger with the arrows they well okay never mind <laughs> so that's why it's so important to keep arrows on your hand if you know that your opponent is carrying medium or okay still doing all right a decent group, you see, this group of uh, archers and goblins and bringing spears are quite useful attacking towers, right? Remember, the archers are, they already receive a, a change because now they have a fast release, like the, ghost, uh, like the goblins in the past, right? So now the archers and the goblins are both doing an awesome, awesome job, especially if they're supporting the giant. Right now, we got the tower in the top right corner with uh, 435 hit points left, and things are looking quite... Okay, but look at the tower in the bottom right corner, guys. 150 hit points. That is definitely not nice. Definitely not nice. We need to start pushing, and we need to start using the giant in the correct way. Archer's gonna take care of the minions. Minion hole real quick to take care of the barbarian. You see, my opponent didn't have a chance to use arrow. He wasn't fast enough. Let's use arrow right now to shut down the prince, because that prince, you know, Princess is always a pain. Princess is always a pain. Freeze was able to stop me for a few seconds. Here comes the Hog Rider. I don't know if we're going to be able to reach the opponent. Probably not. One more time. Look at the Giant, fellas. Giant one more time in position and attracting the rest of the troops. In this case, Valkyries. Barbarians were capable to send me big time against a Hog Rider. Elixir Collector was in a specific location to distract it. And we were able to finish this battle with arrows. A really, really close battle, but we did quite okay with Jason's deck. Let's go for the last one. Let's go back to the Royal Arena for battle number three using Jason's deck. The champions deck in the latest class royal tournament okay so what do we have archers minion horde elixir collector and also britney spears oh this is a really difficult combo giant and mortar but the good thing is that i can calculate that probably my opponent is not gonna have enough elixir <laughs> to use arrows uh, so i was able to counter really really quick this attack with just minion hordes that's why some of the cards that are empowering this a deck they work so well together they complement each other so so well right now my opponent is trying to use the hog rider to distract my troops not a problem my barbarians were so busy attacking the tower and britney spears were providing some support that it was really really difficult for my opponent to survive right now i'm playing with a uh, this is against a player with a higher level than me but still we were capable to do some nasty damage the first we were able to survive the first attack with the mortar and giant and then countering with just barbarians and, Br and Britney Spears were more than enough for us to put this battle almost to the end. 543 hit points left in the tower. So we can sit down and relax now. We are winning now, fellas. And that is one of the good things. Okay, that's a good deployment. That's the way that Jason was using to deploy the giant and the barbarian together. But one more time, trying to be fast enough, trying to calculate how much elixir my opponent has in, in, in his or her hand. In this case, probably wasn't enough to use arrows. And that's why I was able to deploy the minion horde and take care of those barbarians and giant without any issues. Remember, you need to learn to calculate the elixir that your opponent has. 
that's really important. For example, when this battle just started, uh, you notice that my opponent deployed the mortar and the giant at the same time. That's a no-brainer. You, you already know that the opponent doesn't have enough elixir right now to use arrows or something like that, right? So that's why I was able to stop the ground. I mean, stop the attack right away just using uh, minion horde. Fellas, this is the Game Hunter. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Clash Royale. Like I said before, it's... Yeah, the deck that Jason was using is amazing. But it's more amazing the way that he was using this deck on the battlefield. So I just want to show you exactly how the deck works. Now you need to practice because remember that is part in you know, order to master something. You have to practice a lot. And that's what Jason was doing before the tournament. That's why this deck is so effective. It's not just because of the deck. It's because of the player. Fellas, this is the Game Hunter. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share my videos. And I will see you in the next episode of Clash Royale. Take care, everybody.